Hi everybody, I'm Razvi and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can make use of Crypto++, the crypto library, alongside its Crypto PEM module in Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 and 17. The thing is, I had to recently use Visual Studio for a project I'm involved in and it was my first time ever using it. I of course had no idea how to create a project, a solution, how to compile it, how to build it, whatever. And that's the main purpose of this video, to save you the time I spent researching and finding out how to actually make it run. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2019, but as I just said, it works just the same for 2017. The steps you're about to see, they work just the same. Now, for the sake of this example of this video, I'm gonna create a new project right from scratch. But of course, if you want to reuse a project you already have or if you want to import your code, just go ahead and fast forward the video. Skip to the next section. I'm gonna create a console application and we have to give the project a name, for example, CryptoPP. Once it finishes creating the project, which apparently takes quite a while, you will see a little main right here with its own hello world. Before continuing with our Crypto++ example, I must just go to Tools, Options, General and change the color theme to dark. Now we can get down to business. Okay, much better. Now, the next thing we need is some source code that actually makes use of Crypto++ library. I will copy this sample program of AS right from uh, Crypto++ official wiki and I want to paste it in my main file. Okay, I must save it. And now, as you can see, it has no idea what these includes are or how to solve them, what these classes and methods are. And that's what we are about to solve. In order to solve these problems, the first thing we need is, of course, the library itself. So let's find it in GitHub. We must uh, download the source code from the official repository. As you can see, they have a release from uh, March the 7th, 2021. But I recommend you cloning the source code because there are changes, updates that aren't included in the release. So I want to clone it in my desktop, if I manage to do so. Um, I have Git for Windows already installed, and now I simply want to clone the code. Once finished downloading the code, you will see a new CryptoPP folder here. And now the next thing is uh, downloading the CryptoPM module for Crypto++. If you don't have to use it, I had, just skip to the next section. In order to download it, we have to find out where the GitHub repo of these files is. Let me see. There you go. As you can see, there's a release from September 22nd, 2019 more than two years ago, and just as before, I recommend you downloading or cloning the actual repo, because obviously, it is way more updated than the release we see here. After cloning the repo, you will see there's a new folder called CryptoPM. If you have to use it, if you don't, just skip to the next section of the video. The next thing to do is copying the contents of this folder of PM straight into crypto pp folder because we will later need to compile all these files together just skip travis after copying the pm files into crypto pp folder the next thing is compiling the actual library in order to do so we have to look for a file called cryptlib.vcxproj that's a project file for visual studio I will open it in Visual Studio, well, 2019, at least that is my intention. Let me see if I manage to do so. Okay, opening it in Visual Studio 2019 now. 
By the way, I just noticed that in Visual Studio 2017, you will find the Solution Explorer, the contextual menu, on the left side of your screen. But it doesn't matter, the steps remain just the same. When you open the Cryptlib project, you will find four different solutions. Each of these solutions is different from the other, of course, and depending on your needs, you may want to build one or another. If you want to find more info about what each one of those is, I recommend you reading the official documentation of the CryptoPP wiki uh, of their Visual Studio project. This link and any other link I'm using in the video, I will leave them right below in the description. Here you can find out what each one of these solution is. In my case, I want to compile Cryptlib. Before doing so, as I'm using CryptoPM, I have to add the headers and source files in their respective folder, even though we copied them in the folder of CryptoPP. You have to add it via the graphical interface if you drag them uh, with your mouse right from the Explorer of Windows. It doesn't seem to work. I had problems with it. I don't know why. So in order to do so, right click on header files, add existing item and select those header files related to PEM. In this case, they are pm.h and pm common. Now we have to do just the same with source files. Right click on source file folder, add existing item, and we have to add the source files, that CPP files, uh, related to pm. In this case, they are pm common, pm read, and pm write. There is also a uh, certifications file, but in my case, I didn't have to use it. We click on add. Now the files are added to our solution. And in order to build it, we have to first select the solution configuration that better suits our needs. In my case, it was release for 64 bits. After selecting those, right click on the solution and click build. This process may take a while. After it finishes building, you should see one succeeded. If you find any errors or warnings while building the project, which by the way, you shouldn't if you followed my steps, I recommend you taking a look at the closed issue uh, of the Crypto PP PM GitHub repository where we discussed some errors with Microsoft Visual Studio. If you clone the updated version, it shouldn't happen anymore. Now, if you take a look at the folder of our CryptoPP project uh, library, you will notice there is a x64 folder and inside it, you will find Cryptlib and output and the output release folder directory you will find the actual library. This library we will have to use in our Visual Studio configuration for the project of Crypto++ in order to make it run. Now let's go back to our project. We can close this window and recover our Crypto PP project. Now, in order to make it run and get rid of these errors and solve these includes, we have to configure our project. In order to do so, right click on our Crypto PP solution and select properties. And in the properties menu, we have several things to change or to include rather. Before changing the configuration, make sure you are changing the actual solution configuration you are about to build your project with. If you change any other, when you click compile or build, it won't apply. For the sake of this example, I will change all configurations for all platforms at once, but I don't recommend you doing so. Just modify the configurations that you actually need. Now, the first thing we want to change is from the C, C++ drop-down menu. We have a general option 
and in the field called additional include directories we have to specify our directory for the crypto pp as well as pm uh, folder where the cpp and headers files are i recommend you editing it the way you're supposed to do so okay now the next property to modify we find it in the general option in the linker drop down menu and it is the field called additional library directories we have to include the directory of our uh, recently compiled library now we must edit it and let me just copy the folder that's the folder the crypto pp x64 output release and uh, we only need this path because it asks for a directory the next thing to modify is in the input option here we have to specify in the additional dependencies field the name of the library or libraries we additionally want to use in my case it's just cryptly cryptlib sorry that lib okay and last but not least in order to get it running we must modify in the once again c dash c plus plus menu uh, in code generation options there is a field called runtime library we have to modify it and select multi-threaded now we apply our changes we click ok and if everything went well and there aren't any last moment surprises we can see that now we got rid of our of the errors and visual studio is actually able to solve these includes nice that's nice but of course the final test is running the code and checking verifying it is running as expected i will change this plain text um, text string in order to make sure it's running my code okay well never mind just a little typo crypto pp and raspberry overflow is recording okay now we save it and before running make sure that you selected the configuration uh, solution just the same exactly the same that you compiled the crypto pp library with that is if you compiled crypto pp in release and x64 as it was my case now you have to use the code in that very same configuration if you compiled if you build it with i don't know debug for uh, 86 you have to choose debug and 86 right here let's see if it actually runs okay finish generating code and plain text raspberry overflow is recording some crypto pp videos the key and the recover text and everything seems to work just fine and that's how i got crypto plus plus running in microsoft visual studio if there's anything you have to say leave a comment below and i really hope you found this video helpful i hope it helps that's all for today see you in the next one